web and uh, motions too. So today, um, apparently this section is two hours, so I don't know how <laughs> I'm going to buckle all this information together to fit in two hours. So um, because Photoshop is quite broad, it's a very powerful tool. You can use Photoshop to do a lot of things, video editing, um, 2D, 3D designs, motion graphics and stuff like that. Um, so today I'll just talk more on the tools and how you can use those tools to you know, create um, visuals for yourself, the common tools we normally use on Photoshop. So um, my slide is very plenty. It's about 1,000 and something. So I will not, <laughs> I will not go and open that slide because Photoshop, like I said, is a very broad system. But let me just take you straight into the software so that you, you can see how Photoshop actually look like. Um, Sorry, I'm about to share the screen again. I'm coming. Okay, can everyone hear me? Am I clear enough? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. So um, let me just do new canvas. Don't worry, I'll explain all this. So this is the Photoshop interface. By my left, this is your, where you get all your tool sets. This is, these are the tools you, we normally use to design and create stuff. The very first is called your Move Tool. So Photoshop has been existing for about how many years now? I can't tell, since 1960, they've been using Photoshop. Because Photoshop is like one of the first design software Adobe I think is it Adobe or someone? Yeah, Adobe created. And um, ever since then, Photoshop has been amazing. Every update has been a a blast, an improved version of the software. So um, I think last week, yes, last week, um, Adebola, our uh, facilitator, we spoke about, um, talked about some certain things that have to do with design alignment and stuff like that. and. It's, it was a really amazing section. So today I will just try to continue from where it stopped from and um, basically try to explain all these plenty tools that we're seeing here. Um, so first, and first, before you start in Photoshop, you need to um, understand what you want to create like now if you want to create like a flyer and everything the very first thing you need to do is to get the sizing of your flyer then the dimension the width this uh, the length the height and everything so to do that on photoshop you have to go to your own page which is this but normally when you start your photoshop it will take you to this place where you see um your section where you're able to pick up your last work, maybe to create your softwares. So um, let's just dive in. So this place is where you get to your dimension and everything, it's called your project section. And at this point, you can see your width, you can see your height, you can see your resolution. So if you're designing for screen, majority of the time we try to use, um, 150 resolution but, but if you're designing for web so if, for design for web maybe if you want to do um what do you call it a flyer for a website or something so if you use seven um, 150 ratio the size of the um resolution the size of the image will be large and it will be slower for the system to 
you know, process that your image faster. So, um, so right now I will just, I'm just going to brief through because there's a lot to, that we still need to cover from here. So I'm just going to use the basic social media posts and it's by 1080 size. And um, let's just work with 150. Great. So I just want to talk about the tools and how they function. So at this, the white screen or the white box you're seeing here, rectangle is called, this part is called your canvas. So this is where all your work will be placed on, the entire part of this. How many of you guys are with your system here? Because I think that will make work more easier. Because this is supposed to be like a practical class section. Um, okay, I'll just continue. So, but I hope you guys can hear me because I can barely see what, see my screen. Yes, we can. Some people raise their hands. That's okay, okay. Like I said, okay, I'm coming. Let me just change this. So sorry. Okay, some people raise their hand. Please, if you have any question, please let me know. Someone said they don't have Photoshop on their system. Okay, um, because it's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be like a practical class where I explain this to because theory will not work. If I, if I want to tell you the fundamentals of Photoshop, theory will not work. We need hands on, but anyhow, let me just um, continue from, from here. So, but so far so good. We have um, the interface, this is the interface of your Photoshop. So by my left, so in 2019, is it 2019, 2020, 2020, Photoshop did something with their two sets. They, they did like a segmentation for their two. So if you, if you look at this part now, one, two, three, four, five to this part, it's called your selecting two. All these tools, all they do is they select then from the bottom, from year to year, it's your brush section. Then from year to year, it's a dict. Then from year to year, it's like text. So, but this is like one of the latest versions. So they just grouped everything together. Um, this is the newer version of Photoshop. So I'll just, like I said, run you through what and what we can do with this. So let me just show you one work that I was doing trying to explain um, Photoshop. I know everybody like Messi now. The guy is a star boy, good of all time, greatest of all time. Um, so if you want to achieve something like this, it's quite easy. For some people it's like mass and English, like ah, how did this guy get here or stuff like that. Same thing with this. These are like simple design work we can achieve just using Photoshop. So, but I just want to explain the tools before we dive into design, designing himself, because knowing the tool is another thing, knowing how to use the tool is another part too. So with your move to, this is your basic move to, your basic, I mean, move to, you can use it to move around your objects, stuff like that. Um, your selection to, this is your rectangular selection to basically, the function of these two is just to draw and I don't know how to put this thing in a way that, okay, let me just hide all this. Let me just hide all this. And so this is your selection tool. Major, majority of the time, we don't really use this selection tool. So picture your selection tool like um, a bowl a bowl of um, maybe ice cream, a lot of us like ice cream, a bowl of ice cream. So any content that you want to put in your, on your canvas. Now this, this selection tool is giving like a guideline that okay, anything that is coming here, we should not exceed this guide, this line, this select part. So 
then Photoshop now decided, okay, we cannot restrict people by creating a rectangular thing. So let's break it down a bit. So if you click on this, you will see like you see ellipt elliptical and the rest. If you remember, I told you guys that Photoshop did like a segmentation for that too. Like each the very first four is like the selection part, the other four. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, can you hear me now? I've been talking yes, since. Sir. I didn't even know that was muted. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear I actually, you. I actually didn't know that was muted at some, po at some point. Okay, okay, okay. So I think I will just do this. Sorry, just give me a second. All right, I'm back. I was having some difficulty in moving some things. So like I said, we have the selecting two, we have the polygonal two, we have the object selection two, we have the crop two. So like I mentioned before, all these tools are classified under selection two. So from the top to the bottom, what they do basically do is just select and fill. And um, so each two have like an advanced two menu. So this part is called your two panel. At the top is called your advanced two panel. And the twos by here just call your, um, so your default two panels and your advanced two panels. So, so <clears throat> Every two have a section for the selection two, which is the um, mark you two. You have the default, you also have the advanced. So, yeah, so <clears throat> you also have the advanced two here. Um, for so, let me explain what I'm saying because I've just been seeing some things and I've not been explaining it fully. So I don't know if everybody's anybody's familiar with Photoshop here. Yeah. Don't know if anybody's familiar with Photoshop, but this part is also this part is your layer too. So anything you bring into your canvas, we practically come here. If you bring an image into this canvas, into your canvas, you get your image here. You get your layers panels. This is where you your files are being the way you have on canvas. That's the same way you have it here. So, um, so for your Mark U2, like I was saying, if you fill in a color, I just want to quickly do something so that everyone will get what I'm saying. It's not like I'm too fast or maybe too advanced at the same time. Um, sorry, apologies. Yes. So you can see. The Mark U2 is just basically a guide that shows, okay, this guy just selected this part. So any content that is put in there should not leave this border. And we can use that to do a lot of stuff. I'm just, let me just run through. Um, So 
two. Basically, I've explained this, the all, almost the same thing, this and this and this, almost the same thing. But majority of the time, this is used to, um, so this is like the advanced version of Photoshop. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. I have a quote, that's why. Um, <clears throat> Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm back. I'm apologies, guys. Apologies, guys. <laughs> Um, so let me just walk you through what I've done. I think that will, that will make work better than, than me explaining all these tools because if explaining all these tools can take a lot of our times, can take a lot of our time and we'll not leave here. Trust me, there's a lot of tools here that if I start explaining it, how it works and everything, Will not leave here. So let me just take you through what I've been able to achieve and I'll explain what tools I used to achieve that part of the, or this part of the design. So basically, this is like a the normal poster you see on with the footballers and everything where you, you get to creatively do something. So the very first thing I did was to um, get my gradient. So to get like a color background that fits in the club, because PSG basically use like a deep, I think navy blue or something. So what I did here was I created a, a gradient and to create a gradient using Photoshop, all you need to do is, all you need to do is come down to you under your layer panels, there's another tool called your edit to your blend detect blending to this mark um, your layer marks. So basically this is another um tool that you can use to design. Okay, um Daniela wait can you show them where the um the gradient is like Yes, that, yes, that's what that's what I want to do. But I need to let them know this part. So to get your gradient to, there are several ways you can get your gradient to. But the way I used to achieve this, I used the gradients to in the blending option here. So if you click on this, can can you see? Can you see my screen? Oh, it's not showing. Oh. So there's there is a option here that's supposed to be showing. I don't know why it's not showing on the live feed. You have to share your entire screen for that to come up. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, let me do that. Thank you, Victor. Okay, it's showing now. So, can can you see? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah. So, so the first thing I did was I created the gradient from the blending option two. Remember, this part is your two, your regular two. This also part is like where your advanced tools are. Then these are like your default tools. So within this part, I went straight down to the blending option, adjustment layer part, and click on gradient. That's another way you can create gradient. There's another way using the gradient bucket view within the two. So there's a two year call gradient two. If you click on it, all you just need to do is drag 
and it's filling your canvas. Or you can use another option within that same gradient to which is your paint bucket. All you just need to do is create a new layer, create a new layer. And to create a new layer, all you need to do is come straight down to your layer panel at the plus icon here, click on it, it will create a new layer. Then you can now fill. So why that's why it, why that's what wasn't working before was showing this um, like a error message. The fact that there is nothing to fill in here. So I had to create a new empty layer here. Then that's when the paint bucket, this thing could work. But like I said, we want gradient. So this is the best, actually this is the best way to create gradient when you're designing. Adjustment layer, click on gradient. Then you have another two, another adjustment to the uh, panel pop up. So at this adjustment to panels, this is where you can adjust the, the scale, the style of how you want your gradient to feel. Maybe you want your gradient to be more settled or you want it to be a little bit harsh. This is where you do the setting. Like this is like a short version. There's also an advanced version somewhere, but we'll not get to there. Or we'll touch that part. So, so what I did was I clicked on the gradient. We brought another adjustment layer. In this adjustment layer, I was able to create my own gradient. So click there for color, I click there, and I basically just picked a deeper blue, navy blue for my dark part. And for the white part, I used similar color, but yes the shade then after i'm done with that i do is click ok then i change the style from so there are several style of gradients there's the linear the radial the angle reflector diamond so i use the radio because i want it to be like to fade in from the middle upward so what I did there was I reversed the color because if I don't do that, I'll end up having my dark color at the top and it will not look well. So what I did was I just reversed the, instead of coming here, changing the color to this and that, I, all I just did was reverse this back here. And so the scaling, what scaling does is it increases the amount of flare or feed. Let me explain. So, as you can see, the more I increase, the more fade the color looks like. So it gives this very settled kind of feeling, an appealing feeling to the eyes. So you're just going to do that and click OK. Then after that, I got my image. Um, I don't want to open the lot. I got my image online. Let me just um let me just bring the image back and so that we so that you understand from here coming so sorry apologies So I brought this image in and um, to bring image to your canvas, there are several ways you can do that. Either you come to your place embedded or you open a file and um, copy and paste. So just copy and paste in, let's say this image here. So what I did was I control C 
and I came back to my to control V. So that's another way I can paste in an image on my in my canvas. But if you if you're using the place embedded to the same thing, just click place embedded and go to your file and your image is already on the canvas. So what you just need to do is accept. I think I'll work with this. I think I'll work with this. So, so what I'm doing is filling this image up to filling my canvas, to filling my canvas. Then remember that we still have this image and this image. I think there's one more image we still need to do, this image. But I will show you how you can easily remove the background from the picture now. You can already see that this, uh, the work is already looking nice just by slamming and slamming. <laughs> um, Sorry, let me just, let me delete this so that we have. So this image, I downloaded it from the net. I was hoping the class would be like a physical, uh, as a physical, sorry, a practical class where I can share these files to people and like share the files with you guys. And as I'm working, we're working together, but maybe till next time, Sha. So to remove Messi from the background, there are several ways to do that. Um, with, with the latest Photoshop from 2020, there's this option called quick action. With just one click, you can remove the picture. You can remove the background from the picture with just one click because AI, um, Photoshop has been growing and advancing regularly. And so from 2019, Photoshop CC 2019 till to date, you can easily just remove background with one click. No need of using your um, lasso to, to click, 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 and the clicking. And just one small thing like this, everything has spot. I, I, that thing can be very, very, very annoying. So um, we did, that's the first option to remove picture from background with one click. You can do that there. There's another option we can use. Remember the select the selection category. Under your lasso two, you have another two called selection two. So this one, also from 2022, you also have this option of uh, object selection tool. So what object selection tool does is, all you just need to do is navigate to the object. The software will automatically show you the trace of that part. And when you click, it will select that part for you. You can see without, but the majority of the time is not that perfect, but at least just maybe you have multiple work now, you, you need to submit and you have to remove like four or five people from the background and you're like, you have to. So this is like the best way you can quickly remove soft dance from, the, from your background. That's another option using your um, quick selection tool. So after you've selected like, you still have to use your max to layer max to now. With this quick selection to the software, the software will do everything for you, the maxing and the cutting out. But this part, you have to do the maxing yourself. So maxing is basically to is look at maxing as your the regular max, your face, the max, your nose max. So the content still your face still remain, but some part of your face are not showing when you wear your nose marks, right? 
So I just, I'm just using that to um, explain it in a very lean way. So that's basically what that maxing does, layer max. Anyway, yeah, layer max is just like, oh, the, um, so instead of cutting out, so what, pe what most people do when they are designing, especially when it comes to remote background, so after they've selected the objects, they end up using eraser to, to clean the background, and which is bad because you will not be able to use that um, file again because you will not be able to use that file again if you want to use it for another thing because you've already destroyed the content from it. So that's why we, we advise you just max your background, your selection. So click and come straight, come straight down to here, you see your layer max and click on it and background has been cleared off. So if you, if you look at these parts now, you can see like there's a dark and um, black and white cutout here and the actual image here. So this is the, the nose marks that is covering this place. So the actual content is still available, but this is what people are saying. Just the way people cannot see your nose and mouth when you wear your nose marks. So the backgrounds are hidden with the layer marks. This chain is what combine these two together. The, that will combine this part and this part. And if you on click it or maybe on, on link it, you will have issue when you're moving around. So if you move this, the layer marks is moving separate. The pictures still remain the same. So we advise that always link up your work together. That's the um, second way you can move pictures from background. The third way is similar to that one, but this one does not, um, let me put it this way. So this one is more like anywhere you click, it copies that area and so this one is targeted to the edge of um, every um, selection. Let me explain. So if you look at this um, part, the logo of PSG now, you can see that at the edge, sorry, I was using my finger. <laughs> at the edge of this, of the logo, there's like, you can actually see the edge. So that's what this other tool does. So when you click on it, it will pick the edge of that selection. So, it, so it's also good. It's also good for selecting parts like this. So you can use it to select your work and make work easier. So it majority targets the edge of the selection. So you don't have issues with maybe or. Oh, this one does not work with this one. So that's how smart this two is too. So every two just have their own good advantages. So yeah. So you can use also use so let me explain. So this part now. Okay, this part now, because of this part is a little bit darker, and this part is lighter than this part the software just assume that they are together, but you can still unselect this part by just clicking your in your advanced, your default um, to panel up here. Like, you know, before I start, I mentioned that there are, all these tools are linked. Every tool have their own advanced section. They also have their own default section. So, for this two, if you want to deselect, you click here and one click, one click, and we are back on track. So with your um, quick selection tool, it makes work faster and easier. So you don't have to be stressing yourself using your regular, regular. This guy has suffered in design hand. <laughs> we always use it to so, but now he's retired. We are now having a new version of selecting guys. So, um, this part, let me just use that to select 
and um, so that I can move, we can, sorry, remember to always click your plus sign. So this one, this one is, this section is basically, um, so how should I explain, how should I explain this? Okay, let me just, so you know, I'm basically clicking here. Ah. Because it's quick selecting to, to automatically add on. So let me just use another tool that will not add on. Let's see. Let's see your ellipse tool. Let's just move forward. This magic wong, this one is color sensitive. They, is it just I cannot see your screen anymore. Well, you, can, not, you cannot see my screen anymore. Okay, it just popped up back up now. Oh, please let me know when my screen when you guys cannot see my screen. I think it's from your side though. It's been it's been cool here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this quick selection tool is edge sensitive. This is color sensitive. So if you click with with your magic wand, if you click on, maybe you want to get the shirt, practically it's, it's automatically going to look for colors that are related to what you select and it will select that part. So we don't really use this for maybe removing background from, from um, moving picture from background, but we use this when we have scenarios like, um, Maybe you have this Ankara cloth you just designed and you just want to change the color of that Ankara cloth and like, ah, let me change this. Like you, you don't want to stress yourself to okay, redesign and everything or you just want to change that particular part. Like, okay, like this red now. Okay, because it's still, it is still, <laughs> so, like I said, Magic Kong is color sensitive. It will locate any color within that color you selected and it will automatically go and select. So it's only, it does not stay one place basically, but <laughs> you can also adjust the, the way it selects from here. You can maybe do, um, let's say, um, yeah, align and just, so when you click on it, it just maintain within that, so it, it won't go, so it, you're telling it to be edge sensitive too at this point. So to select color, at, but trust me, his own agenda is to do that. So I think I just mentioned, I've mentioned like three ways we can remove background. Right? And I'm very sure everybody's favorite is this one here. This one, no stress, it gives you what you want. So, but I'm currently using the advanced Photoshop. So I have other options within this place, but within this button here that all I just need to do is one click and everything is sorted out. I can just one click and the air will just detect every corner, everything. And all I just need to do is layer max and boom, we have our big daddy here. Running. So if, if you notice, you can see that some parts are still not properly selected around like, but you can still treat that. So this is the beauty of layer max. Within this place, you can still bring back what is gone using your brush too. So black is, black simply means um hide you cannot see in the dark basically so the black when you want to brush i mean if you look down your um the color palette side so black simply means invisible why white means visible do you understand what i'm saying now so for this for those parts that are not visible, we can manually just bring them back using our brush too. 
So I to change the from soft to hard, just come to your um, default to panel, click on it, and make sure that your your foreground color is showing white. Then just and make sure that you are, you are selecting the layer marks, not the actual image, because if you do that, to you are brushing on the actual image, not the layer marks. So make sure you select the layer marks and make sure white visible. So when you brush around there, you can bring back, bring back those parts that were cut off. So you can see that we have our guy back. So basically, this is like grade one. Everything's already looking given already. So, <laughs> so the next thing um, I did was to add gradient to my work. Now, leaving your leaving a smooth work is actually good. Adding gradient to your work makes okay. Don't let me don't let me go to that part. Don't, don't let us go to that part. Let's move on to adding our text to the background and everything, or adding this second image. Let me just let me just do this. So please, if you have any question, let me know. If I'm too fast, if you're not understanding anything, if if you're feeling sleepy too, let me know. <laughs> okay, there is no question. Nobody's feeling sleepy. Uh, we thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so um, the so let's just move into text. So to get your to bring a text into your canvas, you need to go to your two sets down. You will see this icon T. I wish I could zoom in so that you can you can see where I'm pointing at. But this is basically where you get your two. Click on it and come to your canvas. Click and type anything you want to type. That's it. So I'm just going to type in the number 30. So I think that's his jersey number. And um, so that's how you can easily bring in text to your canvas. And if you pay attention, you can see it in your layer. Um, panels already. So, and this layer panel too is, how should, how should I put it, it's very sensitive. So, uh, sensitive in the fact that if you want to bring this forward, you need to take this up to bring it forward. If you want to send this back, you need to bring it down to send it back. So, that's how. So when you're designing to arrangement to matters in your design. And I think Adibola has explained that part very well for us, that arrangement, alignment, all those things are very, 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 very important when you're doing your designs. So I'm sending this back because I want it to be at the back of Mercy, you know, to visually show this. I want to have to use my typography skills, <laughs> which is, this font cannot work for this. Nah, it does not sync well. The size of the font does not sync well. <clears throat> so, you know, I mentioned there are other options here you can use to edit. Other advanced, you can use to edit your, your um, what you selected. So from here, you can change the fonts. Also from here, you can change the fonts. Also from here, you can change the fonts. So Photoshop is trying to make work more easier for you, bringing everything closer to you so that you don't have to stress yourself and waste time looking for key. So every part has their own advantage. Like this one, if you just want to like quickly change font size, you can easily, just for the advance. But if you want to change your font size, either you use this 
panel here where you have your properties. You can see your character. You can see this where you increase sizes or fonts. This is also the same way you reduce. If you drag your mouse towards your mouse icon towards the if it's old and swipe swipe to the left to the right, the font increase. So I'm just going to pick a very visually appealing font, which is Dean. Speak more of like a sporty font. Seeing it already, I like oh, this is more like a sports font, say tight and makes your work look better. So clicking on, um, the, also you can also adjust your font size by using your transform tool. Transform tool does, um, majority of the time designers, like they, they click on this show transform tool. So you can just easily drag, so easily adjust the size. But for me, this blue line is always interrupting me. So I don't like using it. So I rather just do the regular um, transform control T or just click on here, click on the um, transform this thing selection. <clears throat> so basically I'm just gonna scale this to visually make it make sense. So, and you can see, if you notice there are like, there's a pink lines within my canvas. So those are like the guidelines that are showing me, okay, this is equal, this is at the center, this is the best place you can put this. So like, like I mentioned, alignment is very important in design. Very, 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 very text alignment, picture alignment, anything. It's super, super important. Colors, very, very important too. But majority of the time, if your work is not properly arranged and aligned, it's no matter how good you are, your work will come out looking bad. So um, let's just scale this a little bit. So if you, I don't know, I'm holding the Alt key on my on my system. I'm using a MacBook, so it's basically an option. But if you're using a Windows, it will be Ox. So, I mean, Alt, the Alt key and click to drag. So what Alt key click helps is it's scale from the middle. If I just click and scale, it will only scale from that part. But holding Alt will allow you to scale from the middle so you have your work properly scaled to an extent. So, um, so you have this. Let me just scale it a little bit. To change the color of your font, you can change the color of your font from here. You can also change the color of the font from here. So let me just move this. I don't know, I should drop it. Okay, let me just drop it. You can also change the color of your font from here. And you can also change the color of your font from here. So <laughs> there's a lot of places you can use to change your font, the color of your font. So, um so um for instance now i would want to pick a color that is similar to the color within this clothes I, trust me i cannot just magically guess the color by just to take time and uh, stress so there's something called eye drop tool so what that tool does is it helps Select. I think it helps select your color, like any, any color you need on your canvas. All you just need to do, these people are different to I this one. All you just need to do is click on your eye, eye drop to where are you? Eye drop, eye drop, eye drop. Um, pardon me. Yes, found it. So any any color or any place I clicked on, click here, you will see the color change in my foreground color. Just pay attention to this part here. So if I click here, it's automatic, automatically pick the color within that place. If I pick here to pick that color, the exact color where I'm picking. So 
instead of stressing myself and clicking and blah, 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 do all those things, all I just need to do is come to my advanced two panels, this part, to make sure that you're clicking on your text, click on the color, and there's like an automatic, or automatic, sorry, I drop two already. So all you just need to do is pick the color and the font will behave the same way with the color. You can see, have your color already. So um, I still want to work within the white, but I want it to be like blending white or purple or something. So I'm picking something similar to white. So yes, I'm doing that. And that's how you can easily change your color of your text. Um, next thing I did was I created like an overlay. So this, okay, basically I've changed the design. <laughs> so, <laughs> because this is not what I had then or what I had in mind to do, but apparently it's looking all better. So um, let me just explain how we got here. So what I did was on your layer panel, you can hide your layers. Like if you don't want it to be visible, you can just talk, click on the toggle, toggle on, toggle off to, so I just want to hide some layers so that we can focus on this guy here. So I can explain how I got there. So this is, Delete. So this is act, this is the image that was there. So all the plenty thing or the English, the walk that was there. So I did layer max. I first the first thing I did was to layer max the work and brush around it using. You are not seeing. Okay, can you see it now? Can you see my cursor? Yes, we can. We can see your cursor now. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. So um, we have this. So what I did was um, maxed out it from the background. The one, at least I've shown you guys how to remove pictures from uh, background. So that's the same process I did here. And um, after that, I maxed, I created the max. Then, so let me, let me explain this part very well, because this part is quite <laughs> corny. So um, after I created the max, after I've created Max, I created a smart object. Now, a smart object, because a smart object is more like, um, um, how should I put it? So the way you have your, I'm trying to explain it in a very minimal <laughs> way, so that everyone can actually have an idea of what smart object is. It's just basically keeping the original file of that actual image more advanced than this. So if I click on this um, icon that looks like a paper tear something, 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 if I don't click it, it will take me to this part. Now, this part, sorry. Oh, I think I made a mistake somewhere. But anyhow, we'll correct it back. So ah, well, there's no time. Huh? <laughs> time is running. Hey. Okay, yes. Double clicking. 
Sorry, apologies. Okay, I'm clicking here will bring me to this part where I have my marks, but it's still within this within this canvas. Okay, I'm, I think I'm going through very advanced here. Um, let's just skip that part. Let me just, maybe when next we meet again, I'll properly explain the connection between that part and this part. Let me click this and just bring this here. Okay. So that we understand that we have our layer marks here and our image. So, um, so what I did after I scaled, I took my brush, remember white visible, black to hide invisible. So I clicked on my brush too. I changed I changed the the style of the brush to soft because I I don't want it to the edges to look sharp because if I use this to brush over this, it won't come out faded. If you come out, sorry, come out. Come out sharp edge. If you look at these edges, you can see that they are not, they are too sharp. So that's why I'm using a rounded, faded, soft round brush. So if I just click on it, it gives that filled feeling to your work and makes it more appealing to the eyes. So yeah, basically that's what I did. So um, after, increase the size, why am I using shortcuts? Increase the size of the brush. Click here. Increase. See the sizes are increasing. Not too much. Yes. Not too small. And there are other ways you can also increase your size. The size of your brush strokes. So, but those brush around the edges to give it that length feel. After which, uh, after what I did, um, I changed the blending mode. So blending mode is more like the effect um, for the image. So it's like um, the, 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 the blended option. So basically to blend within the background with different styles. That's what that blending option is. So for instance, now if I use the dis dissolve, you can see that the underneath the image, it's already looking like a dissolve kind of pixel dust, something, something. Darken will take will take out the lights and increase the darkness, the dark parts. Multiply is dimming all the lights to I think 4.5 sense um color bone so there are several effects like dasha and their usage but i want to use screen because screen is more like showing making it feel like a light or light um effect of um our goods so i'll just use this guy use the light blend and um, screen blending option there are several more several more you can use the uh, maybe feels good to your eyes. So let's just go with the screen. Sorry, screen. And um, I just remember move to to adjust. Adjust to the top and from in my layer panel, make sure you are clicked on your layer and you can reduce the opacity a bit because I don't want it to be this bright. So I'll just reduce like 40, 50 ish, 52 ish. Which are. So now I can bring I can bring back my the guy that is playing the ball. I can bring back the guy now. So 
So this part, we can either we do a soft shadow effect here to just indicate that this guy is not floating from the ground, you know, he's sitting properly. You can actually do that here. Um, let me just adjust this this way, or I think this is better. That this way, except I bring another image here, but which I'm trying to avoid. So we can have this and bring back our our text. Sorry, this is not our text. This is with our text. This is our text. Okay. So we have our guy here, Mercy, showing up his beautiful skills. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, there's a way to get Photoshop without paying. Um, for starters, you can, if you are a student, I think Photoshop is doing, Adobe is doing like a student discount if you have like student email, but I don't think we do have student emails in, <laughs> in our schools here, but they normally give like slash prizes to, or you just have to pay like 5k or something. But apart from that, you can use crack version if you if you are willing to take the risks of using crack you can use a crack version but i don't use crack because i'm using a macbook and majority of the time all those crack softwares affect your system core so they can just be like a, a virus that you don't know about that will just be eating up your space you just upload, maybe just dragging a picture and you see your, your system is hanging. You wonder like, ah, but there's this space, there's blah, blah. Not knowing that there are a virus attacking your RAM, your graphics card and stuff like that. So I avoid using um, crack version of um, softwares, especially on Mac. On Windows, I can still take the risk because Windows is more like, open software because they allow those type of thing to no not 5k once <laughs> like 5k monthly <laughs> 5k monthly oh. i'm just saying but now dollar is nine nine hundred and ten praise the lord nine hundred and ten hmm. it's it, we shall survive <laughs> what so, um are how much does it cost? You say? What are the plan are you on and how much does it cost? Okay, um, currently on my a monthly plan, I'm using an individual plan, which is within um, 30,000 monthly. But now that dollar has increased, the money too has increased. <laughs> it's still the same dollar rate, but because where I normally buy dollars. Normally I bought, I got my last dollars, eight something. So I, I paid like 32 something. Now dollar that is down 900 and something. So probably I'll be paying roughly 40K monthly. So, but by God's grace, this country is going to be better. So, but we, I still advise you can use crack for start, for starter if you are still learning. You can use crack but because if you are paying and you are not using it to get money back you are running lost so you are running at a big loss so it's, it's advisable that to start you can start with the crack to learn and when you start maybe diving into this career journey thing and everything so i don't know if there's any other question before i move on because we still have some time. I just need everybody to, you know. For now, let me just stop and hear from you guys so far so good that what I've been able to achieve from the small, okay, okay. Okay, so we'll have Ahmed first. Ahmed, mm -hmm. um, you can go ahead and share your question. Good evening. Good evening, boss. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for the class. Um, I want to quickly ask, why do 
most software designers, why do they use Mac? Um, yes. Okay, okay. Um, it's well, Mac is good for in designs basically because they have like a 4K display screen. Color comes out the way they look. Windows also, but for Win for um, Windows Intel, if you are not using like one of the latest system, especially when it comes to um, um, video editing and stuff, with Mac your work is easy. You don't you, you won't get all this um, freezing. You, you yes, it happens on Mac, but it's not as often as the way it happens in um, what do you call it on a Windows. I also have a Windows that I use, but I would rather work on a MacBook because of the 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 way that chips works is better than not way better, but it's <laughs> when it comes to that, it's better. But if you're using like Alienware and all those Snapdragon system, I give it to you, your work will come out like the color is 4K display. So what we try to advise people is, you know, a lot of people are trying to look at their budget and also they really want to learn Photoshop. So we tell them to try to get a system that is a bit higher and like if you're if you want to start like designing now if you want to use you should not use like all these 2017 toshiba all those old 20 xp windows xp I try to use system that still supports the latest windows 10 because there are some systems that they upgrade to windows 10 but not compatible to windows 10. so the, those type of systems they will struggle with a lot of configuration and when you install Photoshop and Photoshop is based on the version of the software you're using. That's how the performance for your Photoshop is going to come out like. So, the, so if you're using system that maybe 2018 and you, are, you install like a 2020 Photoshop on it, my brother, you're ready for some really slow work because <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of things will be going on and the system will not be able to undo it properly and um, you're having issue and lags like stuff. So apart from that, Windows is good, MacBook is good, but to make your work faster, use a Mac and use the latest Mac, not the old Mac, not 2016 notes book. Try to use 2019. They, they will work well, trust me, it will, it will come out well, but if you look at the display, on a 2021 to a 2020 or 2018 system, you will see like there, there's a difference. There's a difference between both of them. And when it comes to design, colors are very important. You need to get a system that will tell you the right color you're using. It's not the one that you put RGB here. And when somebody opens it on their phone, they're seeing CMYK color. I wonder like, ah, Bros, you say you use RGB screen color. What are we seeing? Um, billboard color and um, print color, this thing on digital for a digital design. So, to avoid all those kind of issues, best you get, or you can get yourself a good monitor aside. So, your display will come out well and good. Your system can still be good, but just get yourself like an external monitor that will help you. So any other questions for? I hope I was able to answer your question, Ahmed. Yes, very well. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So is there any other question, suggestion? Anyone? Does anyone have any questions? I think uh, one question that I would like to ask is, is not is, is are you also biased towards Canva? I know like many designers <laughs> just, <laughs> when they hear Canva, they just they just give the eye roll. <laughs> are you also biased to Canva? I'm I'm not biased to Canva. It's what you have, that's what you be use. 
And Canvas to Photoshop is different. They are, they are very, 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 sorry. <laughs> they are very, 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 very different. Canva, you, yeah, can, this is, you, you can easily just drag and drop. So I don't know if anyone is a programmer here. <laughs> anyone is a programmer here. When, you're, when, you, when you write code, it's different from when you are building website on the, um, WordPress, but they still do the same thing. So the end goal of it all is, is your Canva skills good enough to match up the output? That's the that's big. That's the billionaire question. You clients are not ready to know. Okay, you use this one, blah blah blah. They just want to know: Can you do the job if we give it to you? They just have the time. So, I think I have a friend that actually use um, Canva, and the guy is good. In fact, he's not going in Nigeria. He's in UK. And it's making three thousand dollars per week, and it's using Canva to design. So it's not, yeah, I'm not against it, but the fact that you can gather up enough skill that will match up the output of someone that is using a professional tool like Canva is also a, a professional tool, but if I say could match up that person's skill, like if you can do this thing that this thing that was done here on the Canva, then. Canva is not the problem. It's just your skill. If you have enough skill, you know, no matter the software is or the software you're using, you produce good results. So I'm not against Canva, by the way. If you, it's another alternative for <laughs> improve themselves. So yes. Victor said, "Photoshop versus Canva is like naira to dollar." Victor, don't be yeah, like that. Still money, still money. I think, I think the, the whole purpose, they are designed to different um, targets. Is, yes. uh, Canva okay. is designed for um, amateurs and, well, professionals might use it, but they weren't um, the people in mind when it was great. So, yeah. <laughs> so what, what may I feel about Canva is it's not, it's not for beginners. People always make it feel like, oh, if you want to learn design, start with Canva. It's 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 not. Canva is more like that person that oh, that understands design process, that understands design principles, that understands the color and everything, and just want to um, do a quick work for a client. Maybe you're stuck somewhere, you cannot access your system, and all you can just do is your phone and like oh, and there's a person something that's. I think that's a major reason why Canva was created. But people just now develop around the fact that, okay, because it's, it's that simple, it's for beginners. Mm -mm. Any beginner that's out with Canva and does not know design principle, even though they give the person Photoshop, the person will do rubbish. So it's not about the software now, it's about the skill. It's about learning the, the, the actual skill. So you can learn or the principles of designs and all those type of things, those, those things will guide you. So when you're working, you know, okay, I, I understand alignment. If I'm doing this on the Canva, I need to align this text to this text. I need to use this exact color. I need to understand it. So all those things will guide you to produce your work. I wish I could just like, you know, have a, a longer time because Photoshop is broad, is very, very broad. In fact, when I, when I was about to start, I didn't know whether I should start with the two or should start with this one. But I just knew that we'll get somewhere along the line because it is broad. I've not been touched, I've not touched 20% or 10% or 5% of what I wanted to teach today because I wanted to show you how you can use Photoshop to do like a slack slide. I think I think I should do that here. Um, how you can use it to animate basically to do your regular um gif so okay okay ahmed um i will like that you give us the benefit so that everybody we can install that photoshop for next class for me i don't have photoshop installed so it's just like i'm watching screen so mm. 
yeah, so I think you've done enough for today. We can just continue with that class next week. We can just take question more. So that we'll okay, we'll okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right then. So um, next week, um, the person that's supposed to take next week is um, Emmanuel. So I, I don't know, he's um, currently like having um, his MBA exams. So I don't know if he's going to be available for next week class, but I'll, I'll I'm get in touch with him. If if he's not going to be available, then um, Chegun will um, take um, next week class again, then extensively explain more on Photoshop. So, okay. All right. If you have any question, if you like, if you are looking at, okay, okay. Hello. 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 Yes, um, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the class. It has been very enlightening. Then, my question. My question might take us a little bit away from what we covered today. Okay. What okay. I wanted to talk about, what I want to ask you, um, is that you know design has different parts. There's mm -hmm. the part that deals with the tools that you are using. Mm -hmm. Then there's actually the way you think that the designer has the eight nine design things. Uh -huh. Then so the parts now like are we going to, is there are you going to discuss something regarding um those design patterns or forms so that we can just get a, an idea about how professional designs are supposed to be like so that the mm -hmm. one is not just jamming up uh, random stuff anyhow mm -hmm. you get okay so Yes, um, I don't know. Someone, I think someone is taking that class already. I, I don't know whether to talk about principles of designs or something. I, oh. I think I, I saw that someone was someone's about to take that class. So, but still, um, for for design, I think Adebola actually the last um, facilitator actually did touch some of those parts when it comes to the design thinking and typography and um, alignment and all these things those are part of the design thinking and everything so um so this is more like a manipulation design basically yeah so um i think um, mustafa should um would share the video for the previous class. So you can go back as a refresher if you were not present or if you missed any of the steps. Because I think I actually heard that last week. He covered, uh, at least I know he covered alignment and he covered a couple of other design principles that yeah. um, at least at the basic level. So yeah, yeah we'll share that um, on the group. We've been working, we we're supposed to share it before now, but we're trying to edit it because there were long pauses and, um, things that needed to be cropped out and to make the file a little less heavy. So that's the reason why it has taken long. Um, but we'll share that on the group. Um, if you if you're not on the group, we shared the link um, via an email yesterday. So check your email. There's a link to a WhatsApp group and it's on that platform that will share the video. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So well, I would have touched a lot of parts because for I wish I could just open my 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 slide for you to see. Um, sorry. Hmm. But if there's any other question, please let me know. Let me. Okay. Um, I want to ask, um, in preparation for, as a beginner, apart from mm -hmm. Photoshop that is adaptable to our system, um, can we install CorelDRAW to, to be practicing, just like the last class advice that we should be practicing logo? Okay. So my, my issue with CorelDRAW is CorelDRAW, they didn't, they didn't 
advanced themselves properly. Like they, they just decided not to improve it for a very long period of time, and which affected their growth because Corridor was one of the like coolest softwares then before Photoshop now decided improving and the Illustrator came in, like people were like, oh, this is a new game for no, no stuff like that. Um, starting with Corey Draw mm, for to practice logo design and everything, will well Corey Draw is I've used Corey Draw before and for me, my for my this is my own my own view for Corey Draw. It's just outdated for me. And it does not give don't let me say it doesn't, because I've seen other guys that have used Photo and corridor and they did awesome work using it. So what to start, I think best thing is either you start with Illustrator or Photoshop. Because if you want to go into this career, except maybe you want to do more like the print um stuff and um um the print press something something that has to do with printing, that's when they use all this corridor and everything in Nigeria. I see, but outside they use Photoshop, they use Adobe Suits, almost like I can count countries that they are printing presses, Adobe software they, that they use. But it's only in Nigeria that we still use like Corridor and for our printing press and everything. So, but you can, yes, you can start if, if that's what you have with you. But learn, knowing Corridor will not give you the assurance that when you see, when you open Photoshop, it's the same thing. There are two different two alignments and they behave different, two different ways. They're not the same. So except if you want to okay, move towards the corridor career and build on it, no problem. You can start with it. But for now, I advise just do Illustrator or Photoshop. You can use Photoshop to do your logos, but you need to change your and your colors and everything so that in case well you don't really need to because it's a digital display except you want to print that one you now have to do the cmyk color and rather than using the rgb colors so um i don't know if someone is taking color class or someone i've taught you guys about color presets and the rest Yes, we were we were taught color. Color was part of the introduction class. Uh -huh. and the, so. Okay, okay, because yes, because I, I like I said, I'm I don't want to touch those parts because of my own time. I was trying to use the time that I have well so that I won't be repeating things that have already been done or said in the past. So that's why. I, before I start the meeting, I mentioned that uh, I will just continue from where um, the past um, facilitator stopped from, or basically use the fact that, okay, you guys understand, everybody understand the color palette and the rest, blah, blah, where to color mix. So yes, if there are any other questions, if not, All right, it seems like um, okay, um, we have exhaust. Okay, Mustafa, do you have a question? So, yes, I want to ask another question. A little bit away from all this. What we do? Um, there is something about uh, what I want to talk What I want to ask is um, regarding graphic design as a profession. Okay. Everyone is taking graphic design. I don't know about what I'm, yeah, I'm taking it as something I'm going to do for them. So, I want you to give us a little bit um, of, um, from their experience one is starting graphic design as a profession okay you've learned the tools that you're supposed to you've learned a few of the skills that are supposed to learn uh which how would you further uh, how would you go professional in I like, I like that. so that you like like talking about monetization now becoming yes 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 yes, 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 yes exactly. like that. Okay, thank you very much. I like that question. Um, so, 
graphic design graphic designer basically from a lean man they, they see us as uh, not be to just bring logo track logo put logo here it's simple now uh, why will you be charging this amount of money so when i when i started i think it was um 2014 2015 yeah i had to intern at one company where i was basically just had to learn what i had to learn there and um at that point i was still looking yeah i should take this thing serious or because the monetization money that was coming in <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't friendly because so after i've learned what I wanted to do i started doing more like voluntary work and which i actually try to advise people to do because one thing a voluntary work does is it helps you build a very good portfolio you will do it it will look good in your eyes for the very first two years but when you come back to that work you will delete it but <laughs> very the very it's very good for portfolio building and what voluntary work will help you do again? You gain experience for for your for your um, CV and the rest to actually now move into it like a corporate organization. So what I did was I started with the church small group. That is the best place to do voluntary anything. If you want to advance your skills, start from church, like. Church is the best place to grow because there's a lot of work coming in. You will do flyer for this one. You do big board design. You will do t-shirts. You will do this one. So then I, I used to do flyer for my church to volunteer. They have they, they had like a paid guy that helps work do this thing. But because I just, you know, wanted to improve my skills and everything. So I started working at the church and... Um, Started volunteering for free. I was doing design. I was, even though my design wasn't looking good, I wish I could bring out a design I did then compared to what I have now. You see the difference in life. So, so the first thing you need to do is get enough experience. And to get enough experience, you need to remove your eyes from money a bit and think about value. So, value will surely bring money trust me there's nobody that will see value and don't want to appreciate it. appreciate it if you do something incredible and you keep doing it keep doing it and you're solving like you're providing solution to a problem providing solutions to a problem you will surely get people to see you more and when people see you more see your work more people talk one person will just say, ah and I want to do this thing. And somebody just remember that, ah, there's this guy in my church. And that's how it all started for me. Before I got a referral to work as an organization, I worked there and moved from there to another organization. Actually, I worked in like several places. And before the before I started receiving the money that I'm receiving now, it took time because I had to make sure that I was, I was improving every day. You know, there's no one bus stop to learning. Learning is every day, every time, every moment, every hour. So there's no one bus stop to, okay, I've learned this thing. I mean, I've known it already. Mm -mm. There's no one bus stop. So after you've learned, you, if you want to take like graphic design seriously, you need to improve your yourself, improve your portfolio, improve your work, provide solution with your graphic design volunteer. And from there, you can now start doing like a discounted pricing, not a full price. So from there you improve, you move to other, you start increasing it. Okay, I will do two logos for you, 10K. I will do five logos for you, 20K. I will do this, this, this for you. So you start making it, making your price um, lower a bit for people to patronize you. Then you, when you've got in that amount of skill, you, you, it will occur to you that, okay, yeah, it's time for me to upgrade because you start getting more jobs often and that will give you an idea that, okay, my work is 
is going out there. So that's when you now increase your pricing a bit and everything. So at the very start, if you're looking at money at the very start, you might not, you will, but there's a possibility you might not even see money because when you start work and people don't know you're out there because it's people that will make, so it's someone that will make another person trust your work. So basically, so um, starting off as a graphic designer, you have to start as a voluntary person first. You need to volunteer in like, but at least let's say one year, you do volunteer in an organization that they do work like this for one year. There's there's paid, you can do internship there. There are paid internship and stuff like that. You can start at that. Then you can now start advancing your career by learning um getting certification for those skills because it's very important to to get all the certification um for adobe adobe certification is very 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 expensive and it's advanced so it's not for um the regular to get the adobe certification you need like less than one point something to actually get the adobe certified certificate so and that's it, kids will take you to places if you have it. So those are another way you can use to upgrade your, you know, your career as the more you grow, the more you acquire more knowledge and stuff like that. So, so gradually, gradually, you learn, keep learning, keep learning. The truth is, if the day you stop learning, you stop growing. And I don't think there's no day that anybody is not learning one or two things. But career-wise, you need to take your career like really serious. If you, are, if you want to go into graphic design, you need to take it serious because it's really saturated. There's a lot of people that are into this design. And the only thing that will make you stand out is the value of your work, how good your work is. That's the only thing that will make you stand out. If, if, if you check the amount of people that have that have been applying for a job, you see that the highest number you see is like from the creative part. Highest. If if a company posts a job now that we are looking for a graphic designer, in less than 15 minutes, 200 applicants have already applied for that job. So, so <laughs> 200 applicants. The, the thing is, yeah, majority of them use. The, Majority of them use canvas. Cam How am I saying canvas? Canva. Majority <laughs> of them use Canva. And um, like I said, Canva is not a bad software, though. It's us that we are taking, taking it serious that so uh, if, if you don't use Photoshop and using Canva, you're not a bother. I told you, my friend is using Canva. He's making $3,000 per month, it's not, per week. It's not about. It's not shitty Canva. It's not pay. so. Those people that are feeling like ah, oh, Canva is a, Canva is not a professional software. <laughs> but still, uh, Victor, Victor is dragging me. <laughs> Please use Photoshop because if you want to work in an organization, use Photoshop. Trust me. If you want to work in a very big organization, use Photoshop, use advanced softwares <laughs> that, are, that are professional enough and have standards, basically. So I wish I've been able to answer your question. I don't know. If you have any other one for me, let me know. But graphic design is a good place. So don't, you should know, See graphic design or like it's one, it's one bank bank job, it's one roadside designer. It's well, it's the way you package yourself. If you want to be a roadside designer, you will be a roadside designer. If you want to be an international designer, you will be an international designer. It's just the mindset. So don't let people just throw you in and like, oh yeah, I'm, a, I'm not a I'm a show model designer guy. Mm -mm. Some of you guys, there are some, some of you designer guys that are working remotely abroad and stuff like that. So get the skills, get the certification, 
And trust me, in two, three years, you see your place at that place. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Victor said I should show you guys um animation. All right, so I think that's what I wanted to show you guys before, but so let me just so with Photoshop you can create like a GIF, the GIF animation the way you normally see. So I'm just going to do like a simple basic. I'm not going to stress myself. I might not really explain it, but I just wanted to just see the idea that, okay, with Photoshop, you can also do 2D, 3D, and the rest. So from your Windows, there's something called Timeline. So this brings out another option tab. As you can see, you can create a video timeline. You can create a frame animation using the same Photoshop. That's the beauty. With CorelDRAW now, you don't have all this. CorelDRAW is, is, is just design. But with um, Photoshop, there are other options, other cool options you can go with. So let me just do a really, really brief layer frame. Um, I wish this will come out the way I want it to come out, but let's just let's just work. Let's work things out. So, um, so the first layer. How will I explain this? <laughs> that will, like I said, I don't want to explain it. I was just going, I'm just going to show you guys because if I explain this now, it's going to take time. Trust me, it is going to take time. So, this, this. Let me just do it. I will explain it later. Uh, this is not the one I use. Right? Yes. So, um, apply. Should I do position? Okay, use all effects. Say 20 frames. And with this, we can now animate this so let me just should I be able to see it very well so in Photoshop we can do like a frame animation we can do there are more things you can do with it so you can basically just have This dude, let me take this text out of here. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Let me take it out of here. And then um, this guy out of here. Sorry. So um, I'm just trying to let him do the animation himself. And let's leave this guy. So the next frame bring back this guy sorry this guy bring back this guy no Exactly. So 
So this should work. Yeah. So with Photoshop, you can do a lot, trust me. It's like just basic animation. You can have your text come in here, then the guy slide, you can do a lot. Photoshop is one big powerful tool. Very, 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 very powerful. And so all these are like frames upon frames upon frames. It's just automatically scrolling through all those frames. And trust me, Photoshop, if you want to learn full Photoshop, you need three months, three months at least of learning to actually absorb all this knowledge in Photoshop. But trust me, after all this, okay, okay, Hamid. Um, I want to ask. After I've tried my best in in the initial of the Photoshop, is there yes. a place I can pay to learn it, or can yes. I attach myself apart from the church volunteers? Yes. Yes. Yes, there's, there, there are a lot of platforms. You can only learn from Adobe itself, but their fee is very expensive. <laughs> you can also learn from free resources, which is um, if you have your time, you can focus on YouTube, because YouTube is where you can get all your free resources you need. Um, also, you can use, um, what do you call it? Coursera, Udemy. Um, which one again? Sean Academy. Sean Academy too is quite pr pricey, but you get you get your work there. Then that's for online, but for physical, uh, I I used to know one. I've forgotten the name of that company. It's around Giaba. So they teach it. They teach um. They train you how to use basically train. Um, people have to use Photoshop and um, the rest. So then, yeah, but I'm trying to remember the name. I can't remember. There's an other platform like that you can apply for. Just all you just need to type is just Photoshop beginner course, and you will get all the beginner course you need to work. Because if you do, you want to search for the PDF for Photoshop. PDF for Photoshop is about about 1000 plus that's from 2019 but from 2020 this is like the pdf of photoshop it's like it's at least more reference and we have about 100 and 100 how many page 1017 page pages here that talks about all those parts I just mentioned, but this one is this one is more advanced. So before you finish Photoshop, before you finish this handout, it can take forever. Because <laughs> it talks about the color palette, talks about so this one who talks about tab mode settings, a lot. So is this handout available or is it for purchase? So this is 2019. I would try to get to, uh, try to get something um, because the one I the one I have is 2015 and 2015 is already outdated. So the one I currently have, but this one is 2019. So I, I would try to get the complete um, 20 from 2019, 2020. I will share with Victor. So if anyone just wants to go through the work through the manual but trust me i don't think anyone will want to be reading all this just to know it's, it's best you stay in a class where they explain all these things to you and <laughs> you get it done because trust me, one thousand and something pages it's 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 work so you can get your reference from several places Yes, you can get your learning from Udemy, Coursera, and um, 
Yeah. So I think we have five minutes left for your closing. So I think the guy that is coming in, I hope it comes, it, it basically gonna explain all this thing for you guys, because it's more like the motion part of design. So it's basically gonna explain, okay, frame. So what what this so what is happening here is basically the software is um, picking frame by frame. If you know, if you can see it, frame by frame, till it gets to the final frame, which is this. So it, it just keep looping, loops, get to this place. So you know all this uh, football highlight that you see, you see online and you're like, go oh, blah, 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 and stuff, and you see scores. Majority of them use software, use Photoshop to achieve this. Some use After Effects and Premiere. That's another software for motion designing, dedicated to motion designing, so and video editing, basically. Hmm. Yeah. There's a lot you can do. You can do up, down, side, admission, and stuff like that. Then the 3D parts, I hope. I hope my system will not breathe fire like this. I want to put 3D on it. <laughs> the 3D part too is fun because there are a lot there are some plugins that works better with Photoshop when you want to like maybe all those your mock-ups and stuff. They're like 3D mock-ups you can quickly do. You can do 3D fonts. Let me just let me just try this. I, I hope. My system is, is capable. Uh, let me open new file. Yeah. So let me just do normal. My name. This is. So making this 3D. Hey, we're gonna kill my system. Oh. Sorry, the options are not showing here. Why are the options not showing here? The 3D mode is deactivated. Wow. Okay. I think probably my settings. Sorry, I have to read that again. I think he's saying something. I didn't get. Um... <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I just want to show 3D. I think we only have one minute left. So um, thank you guys for having me. Um, hopefully you see me next time. But if not, I will be sending the handout to the actual Photoshop um, handout where you can just try designing yourself and trust me there's no design that is hard you just need to there's no new design i mean basically every day everybody everybody has done everything before so don't try to be um giving yourself hard time to think about okay what do i need to create they're all they're always creative source platform where you can get your creative idea from and work with. So this is a very interesting section and class to people. I'm sorry that um, we're not able to cover a lot, but I was just, I, I, I wish everybody was with their system. Everybody that came in was with their system. Oh, Victor. Okay. 
Yeah, um, I just want to like um, use this opportunity like to charge everyone to like use the learnings from the first two classes that we've had now to like um, like go back home with, when you are with your system, when you are with your Photoshop, if it's your Canva, if it's your Corridor, like just come up with any designs and stuff. You could share it on the on the um. You could share it on the WhatsApp group that we've created and stuff, and we could have like um, professionals look at it and tell you what um. What, like feedback? Give you feedbacks on it. What you need to adjust. That's also like a good way to, to improve, improve and learn and stuff. So just um, after this class, just like go go back home, um, use Try whatever out. software that you're familiar with. Just like pick a particular design, try it out. Then um, you can always share with us and uh, would um, give feedback on those designs. I think um, best ways to even learn is not just like looking at or being taught what the tools are and stuff. Is actually going back and um, doing it. Yeah, acting upon what you've learned and stuff. So yeah, that's um, just what I wanted to share. All right, thank you very much for chipping that in, Victor. Um, it's very important that you, people, um, in learning any skill, essentially, you have to start where you are because if you think of the whole lot of things that you need to learn, you would never start. So what you've learned um, last week, what you've learned this week, Let's um, maybe let's give ourselves the assignment that today when I get home, I'm going to um, make one logo and I'm going to share it on the group. That's one practical way to start. Um, so thank you very much, um, Shegun, for this session. You you said you didn't do much. You did much. You, <laughs> you did a lot. In I fact, you, did, you came to. So thank you very much for your time, for your efforts, for um, thoroughly addressing each person's questions. We are very grateful. Um, and for everyone who showed up for this call, thank you for coming here. Thank you for showing up for yourself. Thank you for putting in the effort, the time, and what you need to um, put in to um, realize the dream you have. You're the only one who knows what you want. And like a particular popular person said, nobody can chase your dream for you. So um, thank you for investing in yourself and for showing up for yourself. Um, I hope that we'll see everyone again um, next week, next Thursday. So um, between now and if you if if you're at home, let's put in that assignment, work on a logo, share it on the group. I want I actually want to see people um, share share their work on the group. So share share it and our, our team of um, speakers so far they would be willing to um, give their feedback to whatever you shared there.